This video is going to use the principle of conservation of energy to solve a motion problem that involves a spring, a, a surface where there's friction, and a frictionless ramp at the end. So let's take a box that has a mass of 50 grams. Someone is holding this box and compressing a spring. Um, the spring has a force constant of 140 newtons per meter, and the spring has uh, been compressed three centimeters, 0.03 meters. So at first I was going to make this a car rolling along the surface, but that's the rolling motion, turning wheels, too complicated. So the box is released from rest. The box moves 70 centimeters along this horizontal surface, and the coefficient of kinetic friction here, 0.12. I won't even bother putting the static coefficient there because the box in motion, we're going to use kinetic friction. So 0.12 for the coefficient of kinetic friction. The box travels 70 centimeters, at which in this idealized problem, um, friction in is zero. It goes up the ramp. But we want to know, just sort of an intermediate calculation here, what is the velocity of the box at the end of 70 centimeters of travel along this horizontal surface? Does it even make it 70 centimeters if friction is acting here to slow the box down? We can answer this question using conservation of energy principles. We have a supply of energy at the start, kinetic plus potential. In this situation, the box is at rest. There is zero kinetic energy. The spring has potential energy. And we do not need to consider gravitational potential energy here. We're moving on a horizontal surface. H is equal to zero from the MGH calculation for potential energy. So the only potential energy at the start I'm going to consider is the spring's potential energy. We're going to lose energy due to friction. So we have to do a side calculation and find the force of friction. That's the coefficient of friction. The normal force is mg. m is 50 grams. You must convert this into kilograms. So 0.05 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. 0.05 times 9.8 we get 0.49 newtons for the normal force. And a force of friction, 0.0588 newtons. That's our friction force. The work done by friction is the force of friction times the distance traveled. It comes in as a negative. Why is this uh, work done by friction a negative number? Friction never helps motion. Friction takes away energy from systems. So this non-conservative work, that's going to be a negative number. Another way of looking at it is that the uh, force of friction is opposing the velocity. It's back to the left. This displacement is off to the right. 180 degrees between them. Cosine of 180 degrees gives us a minus 1. But the better concept, just to remember, the work done by friction you know, takes away energy from the system. We have a supply of energy. is potential energy here. Friction is going to remove some of that away from energy of motion. At the end, we have no potential energy still. The spring is now relaxed. We're on H equals zero horizontal surface. There's no gravitational potential energy. All of our energy is in the kinetic form. What's left of it? One half m v squared. So on the left side, we calculate the spring's potential energy. Here's the energy lost to friction. Subtract those two. Uh, one half of 0 0.05 gives us 0 0.025. So do the subtraction, divide by 0 0.025, take a square root, and I find 0.935 meters per second. That would be the velocity at the end of the 70 centimeters of travel on this surface that has friction. Part B, how high does the box go up the ramp if we have a frictionless ramp? Frictionless ramp, how high do we go up the ramp? Well, we can start the calculation when the box is at the base of this ramp. After we've gone through the friction, we can start right here. We know the velocity. So our supply of energy now is kinetic energy. One half, 0.05 is the mass. 0.935 we found was the velocity. That has to be squared in doing kinetic energy. Our kinetic energy at the start of this separate problem, as we're about to go up the curved ramp, 0.0219 joules. In this uh, curved ramp, um, we're on h equals zero at the bottom of the ramp, so there's no potential energy. And we're saying that the curved ramp is frictionless. We're making up a physics problem here, an idealized problem. 
So there's no loss due to uh, non-conservative force here. The friction is zero. We want to know how high we go up the ramp. The maximum height, the box will be stopped for an instant before it slides back down. So our velocity at the end is zero. The kinetic energy at the end is zero. And our supply of energy has now transferred from kinetic form into potential form. 0.05 uh, times 9.8 mgh. Use your calculator. See if you can confirm the box goes up 0 0.0446 meters. About 4.5 centimeters will be the height, maximum height of the box above this horizontal surface at the time when the box comes to rest, zero velocity, it's given all of its kinetic energy it had here into potential energy at this maximum height above our horizontal surface. Using conservation of energy, accounting for the energy loss due to friction, we could calculate the velocity at the uh, 70 centimeter mark. Making the problem have no friction here makes the second calculation easy. Uh, conservation of energy, kinetic energy becomes potential energy. We get 0 0.0446 meters. You ought to confirm that by double checking all these calculations.